Now, next important aspect about bacteria is bacterial spores. Now, the very first rule regarding bacterial spores which you need to remember is they are never produced by gram negative bacteria. Okay, they are never produced by gram negative bacteria. And I have already pointed out before uh, the two important uh, you know genera of uh, bacteria which do produce spores. What are they? The bacterial spores are produced by two genera. Remember B and C that is uh, Bacillus and Clostridium. Now when as a rule we are saying that bacterial spores are never produced by gram negative bacteria. So by default guys by default Bacillus and Clostridium have to be what gram positive. Okay, These are gram positive rods G plus rods. All right. And uh, what exactly a spore is and what is the purpose uh, of a spore when it is uh, formed. Uh, all that I will talk about in a few minutes. But for now, before that, uh, do remember that bacterial spores are, you know, very, uh, very uh, resistant kind of uh, structures which have got a very long life. So, they can survive uh, uh, for, uh, you know, years and years altogether. So, just a little memorizing tip for you to remember the names spores the bacterial spores survive since B BC before Christ. So, again remember B for bacillus C for clostridium all right and uh, the spores are also encountered in fungi where spores participate in fungal reproduction or multiplication whereas that is not the case with bacteria. Remember how do bacteria replicate or multiply? They do so by binary fission. So, remember they are not meant for the bacterial spores are not meant for replication unlike the fungal spores. And they were first discovered the bacterial spores were first discovered by Sir Robert Koch in a bacterium Bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis. Previously, I have uh, spoken uh, some facts about uh, Bacillus anthracis uh, that it is the largest bacterium. It is so big in size, uh, it has got a big ego. So, it is non-motile and remember uh, this organism being the biggest bacterium it also was the very first you know uh, bacterium seen under the microscope and uh, the spores were also you know discovered uh, in, in the same bacterium. So, a lot of firsts are associated with this bacterium uh, whose details I am going to talk about in the clinical bacteriology module. So, Sir Robert Koch appreciated spores in the biggest bacterium. Okay, that is Bacillus anthracis and Sir Robert Koch is regarded as the father of bacteriology. The father of bacteriology. What does a spore mean? What does it actually? Now, if you see this bacterium, it is a happy go lucky bacterium. Okay, we call it the vegetative bacterium because uh, it is uh, then everything is going on fine in the life of this bacterium. Okay, uh, so uh, the luck is in its favor. It is getting appropriate nutrients, and uh, if it's an aerobe, it is getting sufficient oxygen uh, for its growth. And if suppose this organism is, a, is, a, is an anaerobe, it is uh, going, uh, it is uh, you know not in the vicinity or the atmosphere of oxygen. So basically, everything is going on fine. So this is this kind of bacterium is called as vegetative bacterium, where uh, you know met metabolic activities are going on, replication is going on. Right, but as uh, things can go wrong in life, okay, not just uh, for us, but in case of bacteria also, sometimes you know uh, they can encounter some tough situations in their life. By tough situations, I mean there could be depletion of nutrients, there could be decreased oxygen concentration uh, if you're talking about an aerobic organism, or there could be exposure to a certain amount of oxygen if we are, uh, you know, if, if, if we are talking about uh, an anaerobic organism. So, basically, all these situations are stressful conditions or adverse uh, conditions uh, for uh, bacteria and in these adverse conditions to tide over these adverse conditions certain bacteria can transform themselves into what is known as a bacterial spore 
Uh, so we can understand this by this analogy that uh, a spore is something like the sleep mode or the aeroplane mode uh, which is there in our mobiles. It is that kind of mode where now the bacteria is sleeping. Okay, bacteria is sleeping. The spore is a very thick walled, extremely dry structure and it is extremely resistant to a lot of antibiotics, uh, UV rays, a lot of chemical disinfectants. All right, and it can survive uh, in the environment for decades and decades altogether. Okay, and because it can survive for decades and decades altogether, another memorizing tip for all of you, which I already have told you, is remember the spore survives since BC or before Christ. All right, so suppose. Since uh, both uh, the bacillus and uh, clostridium, both these genera are the genera of gram positive rods. I am going to draw a gram positive rod over here. So, this is a vegetative bacterium, vegetative uh, bacterium, happy go lucky. Okay, everything is going on fine, but some challenges this bacterium has to encounter in the form of certain adverse conditions. But this bacterium is going to, you know, try to fight these hard conditions by becoming indifferent in the sense that now it will transform itself into a very thick walled structure. Now, this bacterium is sleeping. This is a very thick walled structure. This is referred to as bacterial spore. All right. So, it is thick walled it is highly resistant to a lot of chemical disinfectants, UV rays and many antibiotics and it is extremely dry. The water content is almost nil, extremely dry structure. Now guys, uh, water is life. I already uh, have told previously as well that fourth, four fifth of uh, the weight of a bacterial cell is contributed by water and all the metabolic reactions are going to take place in the environment of water. So, when we are saying that spore is a very dry structure, do you expect the metabolic activity to be high or low of a bacterial spore? Obviously, it is going to be low. So, there is very less metabolic activity by virtue of the dry nature of the spores very less metabolic activity all right so because it is dry that's why it is showing very less metabolic activity and you know many of the uh, antibiotics uh, act by interfering with uh, one or the other metabolic activity of bacteria and that is the reason why the spores are so very resistant to a lot of antibiotics all right so this is the rationale behind it uh, but then uh, you know after every night uh, uh, a new day comes Alright, so uh, in the life of this uh, bacterium, which has now become a spore, when you know when the conditions, uh, when the good conditions return, what will happen? On the return of favorable conditions, this bacterium will again switch back to its original mode, the happy-go-lucky mode that is, it will become again the dancing, happy, multiplying or replicating uh, metabolically active vegetative bacterium. So, we saw that from one bacterium, one bacterium gave rise to one spore and uh, in uh, the presence of adverse conditions and when the favorable conditions returned, the bacterial spore reverted back to the vegetative bacterium. So, definitely bacterial spores are not a method of multiplication or replication of bacteria. All right. Then another peculiar feature of bacterial spores is that the bacterial spores have a very important chemical uh, referred to as dipicolinic acid. Now, what does this chemical do? Dipicolinic acid chelates divalent cations, for example, calcium ions. Okay. Chelates means dipicolinic acid is going to form a complex with calcium ions if calcium ions are present in the environment of the spore. Remember, these divalent cations like calcium are 
harmful to the bacteria all right but uh, they are not able to harm spores because the spores are going to form a complex with these calcium ions so that is how protection will be protected uh, will be uh, you know afforded uh, to the bacterial spores against the calcium ions so basically this dipicolinic acid is going to act like a shield a barrier against attack by calcium ions okay that is what is meant by chelation so remember c c d that is cafe coffee day c for calcium second c for chelation and d for dipicolinic acid so guys remember cafe coffee day c c d the calcium is chelated by dipicolinic acid c c and d a very good uh, analogy which uh, i can give for bacterial spores is that bacterial spores are very similar to what the bacterial spores are very similar to the seed of a plant just like um, a bacterial spore the seed of a plant is uh, a very you know dry structure but if you plant it in the soil if you water it meaning if you expose it to favorable conditions a nice plant grows out of that seed all right so this is about bacterial spores